Bait throwers, we're going to look at uh, one of the top mill throwers in the world. Um, an up-and-comer, I call him, Philip Milanoff of Belgium. I really like this guy. He's not, you know, he's not there yet, but I'll tell you, if there's any one thrower in the world that has potential to be the t top thrower in the world, it's this guy. And based on his, his speed, uh, he's probably, in my opinion, probably the fastest discus thrower um, in the top 12 in the world, for sure. Um, and you'll understand it uh, when I show you this clip. Um, the, the other thing, too, you know, he, he's a 6'4", 6'5", guy, maybe 235, 240. So he's very dynamic, very quick. Um, he's certainly not the biggest guy, but he makes up for it in, in his speed. And, and I think this is ultimately which is going to make him a, a really great thrower in the next couple of years, for sure. Um, so I'm just going to play it out the video. And then we'll come back and we'll have a look at uh, the rest of it here. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's let him go. He's in Shanghai, May 2017. Let's her rip. Gets it out just just shy of 65 meters. An excellent throw uh, for this. You know this early in the season. So let's let's have a, a, a another throw here and we'll, we'll let him go. And. We're just going to uh, kind of slow things down um, in this throw. Um, and what I really like about uh, uh, Philip is uh, he does all the, you know, he, ha he has his own very unique way of addressing his speed and trying to maintain his composure in, in the discus circle. So uh, his setup in, in the front of the circle is most like uh, most all great throwers. And we're just going to freeze him right here. Let's have a look at a couple of things now uh, to kind of contribute to this kind of discussion in the discus. Okay, first of all, let's have a look at that. Look at that arm way back here. Um, he's got a close off arm over here on the left. I call that a loaded position. So he's locked and loaded, as I say. Um, and uh, the other thing to look at, you know, kind of analyze different components of his throw. You can see he's from this angle. Uh, he's generally just offset uh, left and right here, and uh, that's very common uh, an address position. But you can see here he's ready to go in this throw. So let's let's kind of move things along. But uh, I want to just make a really uh, important point here, and what sets him apart, which addresses the you know overall speed of his throw, is down here. And I picked up on this really quickly. And there's no guy that I know that turns that foot over quicker than this guy. Um, he just he just moves it so quickly um, to start his throw and to keep his lower body going faster than his upper body than Philip. So let's have a look at uh, w watch this as he comes around here. We're just going to try to bring it as now you can see he's starting his throw, but watch that left foot. It's gone. Look at that. He, he just moves it, and he doesn't over-rotate the bottom. He doesn't over-rotate. So his foot will be pointed this way. He doesn't over-rotate it. I mean, he doesn't swing it to the, to the other side. He just points it in the direction of the throwing sector. But look at, by doing so and moving that, look at his upper body. We always talk about a disconnect from his body. Look at that. His toes pointing in the direction of the throw, literally. And look at his upper body. He has full body torque there's no doubt about that now what he's going to do now at this point is he's going to utilize that right swinging leg obviously he's going to bring it back in here to the center of the circle and what he's going to do is going to maintain um, on the ball of his foot that right foot as he comes around so let's have a look as he makes his um, attack to the middle of the circle and you can see here his leg swing not too light but here he comes to the middle of the circle, and contact has been made to the center. So let's have a look here. A couple of really good points here for Philip. He's up on, uh, you can see his heels off the ground. He's on the ball of his foot, and this will continue to turn. This is very, very important for any discus thrower, especially at this high level. And you'll notice what really, really uh, important point. Look where his discus is. You can still see it in the field of view. It's behind him for sure. And what he's going to try to do now, he's going to try to address that left foot down here. 
in a power position while trying to maintain the discus as far back as he possibly can. So watch the next couple of frames. Here he's making contact. Now this is a classic power position. Everybody would agree with this. Um, you know, he's, he's offset. He's on the ball of his foot now over here. Over here, he's uh, made contact with his left blocking side. And what he's going to do now is obviously he's going to start generating some speed. If there's anything that I can possibly give this thrower to throw even further, um, it's going to be in the next few comments. Right up to this point, he's an outstanding thrower. And if I was his coach, I want you to pay attention to a couple of things here. Now watch as in the next couple of frames. Philip has come up off and he's uh, his foot here. And you can see his discus is still back. He's lifting a little bit. I understand that. And, and coaches will, will appreciate this as well. He, he is coming up and he's lifting a little bit. But unfortunately, it, uh, Philip is not a uh, post thrower. In other words, he doesn't block too heavily on the left side in this throw. Uh, he's a spinner, I call him. He comes right out. He uses his speed to, to come out of that spot. So watch the next frame. Now look at this. Uh, it's very important to note um, that he is starting to lose contact with the surface. You can see his left foot is literally very close contact, very little contact with the surface at all. Watch in the next frame as I move it. He is now gave up his position, his posting block position. This is a little bit of a block here, but you can see he's his foot is off the ground and he's maybe on his tippy toes here. Note, you guys, that the discus is still in his hand. This is incredible. He chucks 65 meters and he's leaving the surface now. Um, I'll tell you, uh, if I was his coach, said, Philip, we've got to post and throw. In other words, let's try to stay down on the ground for as long as we possibly can at release. And it's such a fine tuning um, part of the throw, isn't it? it? It may be easier said than done. But watch as we go to the next frame. He's completely off his feet. Completely. No contact with the surface. Ball players out there, you know, I mean, if you ever threw a ball, football, any kind of ball, and you're off the ground, you're throwing it, you just don't have uh, as much uh, force behind the uh, ball implement or whatever you're throwing if you, have, if you remain contact on the surface. And if Philip were to be patient a bit, address the discus while he's still in contact with the surface and let it go, this guy could throw quite easily, quite easily into, into the high 60s, in my opinion, so, and maybe even further because he's just so fast and dynamic. So if we move it just a little bit more, you can see he's a, a lot of, a lot of discus soars, uh, especially the younger ones love doing this, come spinning right out of the front of the half instead of maintaining a good power block position up front and then spinning out of it. And of course his timing's off a little bit here, but you know what? When you're his size and you've got his speed, you give up a lot and that's what the result you get. So I'm, I'm really, uh, it's exciting to see the potential of this here thrower. There's no doubt about it. And Philip uh, Milanoff uh, of Belgium is going to be an up and comer. And I'll just play out this one throw here and just watch those components. Watch that quick left turn. Bang, bang. And he's very, very quick. And if he could maintain that left side block a little bit longer and stay on the ground, this guy will throw a ton. Hope you enjoyed this.